Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Think Computers Weekly Tech Podcast. This is episode number 403. And as always, we are brought to you by Amazon. So if you go to thinkcomputers.org forward slash Amazon, anything you buy there for a little while helps us out, gives us a little kickback, doesn't cost you anything extra, and helps us keep the podcast and site going. With us, as always, is the leader of this uh, this whole thing. We got Bob over here. What's going on, Bob? Um, I'm under the weather. Try not to die. I got. I have my tea. I'm I'm 100 percent under the weather, which isn't great. Is it, is it hot tea? It is hot tea. I. It's like I feel like I have a sinus infection. Yeah. So you need one of those hurts. bugs that like keeps it warm or keeps it hot. Yeah, like sure. an ember mug. I mean, it's it's still pretty hot. Okay. Yeah. It's, I, but yeah, yeah not not feeling too hot. Was about to cancel the podcast, but decided to keep on trucking. We can get through this. I feel. Um, but yeah, it's never it's never fun when you get sick, especially when you have no. a bunch of stuff to do. Um, well, especially when it involves <clears throat> being on camera and talking. Being on camera <laughs> talking, I was like, and it was so crazy. I was I was telling you this before we started. I was like, during the day, like in the middle of the day, I was like, oh, I'm getting over this because I've I've had this for like a couple of days now. I was like, I'm getting over it, and then it just. You know, right around yeah, like, the evening, it always does that in the evening. Yeah, it started coming back again. I'm like, ah, I gotta do the podcast. Like, yeah. but we'll, we'll, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna truck through it, and uh, you know, hopefully, I don't sell income dying or I have smokers long. One of the two. Nope, you're good. You know, so um, but yeah, lots going on this week. Um, lots to talk about. Some cool reviews, some new products, um, and yeah, just some really cool stuff. So we'll start out this week with a keyboard. Uh, we actually took a look at two keyboards. <clears throat> The first one I have right here, super small. This is the Logitech um, G. This is their Pro X60 Lightspeed, 60% keyboard. So this is the first Logitech G Pro 60% keyboard. Um, and if you guys aren't familiar with like the Logitech G brand, that is their gaming brand. That's where you're going to find all their gaming related products. These products are specifically made for gamers. And then the pro line is for really for esports pros or aspiring esports pros. Everything on those, everything on these keyboards is really designed for the pro. Um, nice. So that kind of gives you a little context about what we're going to be talking about. Now, the cool thing about this keyboard right off the bat, and I'll show it to you um, real quick, is that it comes with this awesome carrying case it's like a hard shell case too so if nice. you're taking this to you know to tournaments to your friend's house you have a really cool carrying case there which is great um <clears throat> detachable you know um light speed 2.4 gigahertz adapter and it does have the actual um dongle adapter so you put the actual dongle closest to your keyboard and further away from your usb port because we talked about this before, but if you don't know, on USB 3.0 ports, there is a bunch of noise at the connector uh, that could just interfere with with the wireless connectivity. So you, this allows you to do that. So you have that there. Um, as you can see with the keyboard itself, we received the magenta version. It's also available in both <clears throat> um, white and black as well. The magenta is like they've done these really well down to... Even the, the metal top plate is also magenta, which is really cool. Um, but, you know, on the white version, it's going to be white. On the black version, it's going to be black. Um, it is worth noting that we were sent, for some reason, the international version of the keyboard. I was wondering. Um, <clears throat> so it has an enlarged enter button on the American version. It's your normal size and more stretched out. And then it has the euro symbol <laughs> right here for some reason. Um you know, but that, that's that's like the main difference. And again, 60% keyboard. So you lose your, your arrow keys, you lose your function row. And of course, you don't have any number pad. Um, so really bringing the size down. And I think 60% is popular with a lot of people because there are people who use really low DPIs and they want a lot more room on their gaming surface to move that mouse around. Um, especially like first person uh, shooter gamers and stuff like that. So here's what the American version will look like. So you can see the difference with the enter button there. Um, but yeah, that's that's the main difference. And of course, that's the black version. Um, this is, like I said, it does have the metal top plate. We have double shot PBT keycaps. We have optical switches. So if you're not familiar with optical switches, they're designed very much like a mechanical switch 
but essentially there's a laser that's like this and then when the key press goes down it it you know registers that instead of the actual mechanical action of that these are more accurate because of that and they don't have a debounce delay so your delay to the next press you don't have the delay like you would get on a mechanical switch um that, that's that's kind of like the big thing here with this keyboard um and you can see those switches in there now <clears throat> Logitech has said that there it's kind of unclear, but they said that the switches can be removed, but they're not advertising it as a hot swappable keyboard. Mm. And I believe it again, it wasn't made clear that you'll void your warranty if you do take the switches out. So, so no, no hot swap capability here. And when you're a, esports or aspiring esports player you don't want extra things on the keyboard to annoy you uh lights buttons things like that so they've actually put a volume slider or you know volume little volume wheel on the side of the keyboard really easy to access um which is great and then and this this little led is your caps lock led so it's oh, off nice. of the side of the keyboard so you you know it's not annoying you while you're trying to game which is nice on the opposite side, this is actually, you know, like a a switch that would be like a light switch. It's kind of hard to press down. Okay. This is that that same type of switch. This en this enables and disables game mode. And the reason they made it a little harder to press, so you don't accidentally right. press it, right? So yeah. maybe you have game mode enabled, which essentially you can select, which we will go into the software it's going to disable your windows key and things like that. So if you are in a tournament, you don't want to accidentally, you know, tab out of your game. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> they, they have it. So it's a little harder to press. So if you do have game mode enabled, you don't accidentally bump the keyboard and, you know, take it off of game mode. And then you're hitting, you're hitting the windows key and you're tabbing out during a tournament, which wouldn't be yeah. great. Um, so you have all that there on the top edge of the keyboard. You have your type C connectivity. This is a little power button. And then you have your two connectivity buttons. So, this is a light speed keyboard, so you have 2.4 gigahertz wireless connectivity, but you can also connect via Bluetooth. And again, the LEDs are not, you know, front like they're they're back facing, so they're not going to annoy you or anything like that, uh, which is really nice there. Um, and you did see like, you know, you can by default the keyboard sits at a slight angle. You can increase that angle if you want to. Um, pretty easy to go ahead and do that as well. Now the big thing when it comes to moving down to a smaller keyboard like this is that you're losing a lot of functionality, especially if you're coming from a full size keyboard, but even something like a TKL or even a 65% because the 65% still does give you arrow keys and, and, and things like that. Um, sure. or you have a 75%. So again, like, you know, there's not a lot of keys, especially if you're, you know, doing a lot of different actions. So what they've actually done in their software is created what they call key control. And it's pretty interesting. So each key on the keyboard can be remapped to five different actions. And those actions can be enabled with different modifiers and event types. So when it, so when it comes to like event types, it would be like a standard key press. Um, one would be a like holding, like, you know, holding the, um button down one would be releasing you know and things like that mm -hmm. um and you could do like quick press and you can kind of really really dive deep in what different functions you can have um and then you have modifiers so you can set your different modifiers to like control or alt so if you hit control then the key it's obviously something different you know what i mean mm -hmm. and then these remaps are over three different layers so you have a normal layer then you have the function layer, which is when you hit the function key. And then you have a G shift layer, which is throughout Logitech products. It's like, uh, you know, if you have a Logitech mouse, you can set the G shift button to one of the mouses on the, uh, to one of the buttons on the mouse. And then every, every one of your actions is remapped on the keyboard as right, well. Right. Um, so with that, you essentially get 15 actions per key. Jeez. on this keyboard and this software is one of the best that i've seen because we have seen software that give you some of the same functionality but mm -hmm. it's one of the things when it comes to keyboard software especially if you're dealing with like brands that aren't as well known their software is really 
just not great. Yeah. Um, so you can really dive down deep and really fully re uh, reprogram this keyboard, which I like. On top of that, Logitech does have within the software has a full section of remaps that you can download. They have, it's going to go ahead and detect all your games as well and your applications and have presets for those. But again, you can go online and download those as well. Uh, and you can create your own and share those with the community as well. And I've always loved this. Um, I think Coursera was one of the first to do that with the lighting uh, yeah, on the yeah. keyboard. Uh, you could share your lighting settings. Yep. Logitech is doing the same thing, but it's with remaps and lighting and a bunch of other stuff that you can do. Um, so it's really, really cool. Um, really easy to use this keyboard. When it comes to lighting, you have full per key RGB backlighting. Another thing that's great about this too is that when you get a new RGB keyboard and you turn it on, what's the first effect that always comes up? Rainbow. Yeah. And most people, <clears throat> that's the first thing they change. Yeah. So this one actually goes to like a teal blue by default. It looks really Salt. good with the pink. Yeah. So Magenta. standard, just single color, which I think a lot of people like. So that was another change that they made on this keyboard. And I, I I really do like this keyboard. It felt really good. We have our sound test in there. Um, the RGB lighting looks good. You know, you can kind of see what it looks like here. It, it does look really good. The thing that I think a lot of people are saying, and, and I do agree, is that this keyboard is decently expensive. Remember, it's a 60% keyboard, mm -hmm. but it's $189 or $179.99. Yeah, that feels um, high for, for less, right? <laughs> like less... Less functionality. The, now the Razer Huntsman V3 Pro Mini, that's the their newest one, is the same price. Okay. Um, the Steel Series Apex Pro Mini Wireless, which again is sixty percent, is ten dollars more. But the the argument that people are making, and it's a very valid argument, is that the Steel Series keyboard has the magnetic uh, key switches, mm -hmm. so you can really <clears throat> fine tune. You know how far down the actuation is and you can really we actually reviewed that keyboard um yeah. you know you can do a lot more with those type of switches and i think that's what i from what it seems like on twitter uh, a lot of people are were expecting that's what this keyboard would do right uh gotcha. because it is made for esports pros and especially like a lot of super fast fps gamers want those magnetic hall tile type of switches and you don't get that here you do get the um you you do get the optical switches which are nice but i think you know the latest and greatest is they magnetic switches and you just you just don't get those here um <clears throat> so but i but you know you do get the carrying case which is actually really really nice um so i do like the addition of that everything works seamlessly as far as the software goes setting everything up easy to connect both 2.4 gigahertz you can use it wired as well and of course, you can use it via Bluetooth. Um, I gave it a nine out of ten, but it is expensive for like the average gamer. Paying one seventy nine for a sixty percent keyboard is a lot. Um, and I do have to say, too, just like we reviewed the Corsair keyboard, um, these gaming keyboards they don't have necessarily the best sound when it comes to a magnet or like a you know when it comes Still to not the sound of like a true custom board, right? Yeah, gotcha. yeah, and it, you don't have. I mean, you do have some sound dampening and stuff, but it's just not to the level of some of the other keyboards that we've taken a look sure. at. And again, those keyboards aren't designed as gaming keyboards. They're designed as more mechanical keyboards. So it's a give and take, yeah. um, you know, but I, I think it's a really good product and it's good to see them come down to 60%. Um, it was my first time using their new uh, software and it's, I really liked it. Um, so yeah. So just take it at that. I think if you are an aspiring gamer or aspiring like pro gamer, you're playing with a team and you want something that's going to perform really well, this is going to be a keyboard that does that. Yeah. You're just going to pay for it. And again, if you were looking for something that gave you even more flexibility, like the magnetic switches, the Apex Pro Mini Wireless uh, from SteelSeries would give you that. So in in that form factor. Sure. So, yeah, so no, yeah. it's... It's nice seeing a, a Logitech product come through. We haven't seen one in a while, I feel like. Yeah, it's, it's been a while. So they, they reached out last minute and we decided to take a look. And uh, yeah, it's good. It's good to see what they're doing. So yeah. 
So yeah, so definitely go ahead and check out that review. We're going to go ahead and switch things up before we take a look at the second keyboard and take a look at this little guy. This this guy is super, super small. Tiny. Yeah, so this right here is the Patriot Viper Gaming VP4000 Mini. It's a Gen 4 NVMe SSD. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's primarily designed for upgrading your steam deck your rg ally mm -hmm. all these mobile gaming consoles that are coming out this is going to be your upgrade path if you get um you know if, if you want to add more storage or even get better performance because this is going to give you better performance than the drive that's say like in the rog ally um and it's available in two terabytes so most of these mobile gaming consoles the highest end spec that you can get is one terabyte this will give you double that so you get double the storage Very as nice. well so it's an m.2 2230 which is the smallest as you can see i mean this thing is just absolutely tiny um and again it's not the fastest drive either it's not you know it's not really when it comes to gen 4 speeds it's not crazy crazy fast but it's going to be faster than the drives that are in a lot of these mobile gaming consoles um <clears throat> I think it's 5,000 megabytes a second read and 3,500 megabytes a second write. And in our testing, it performs right up to that. I just think this is a nice little upgrade, especially if you're loading a ton of games on your Steam Deck, your RG yeah. Ally. Um, I tested this just in a normal PC. You can use this in a normal PC as well. Um, but it's just crazy. I mean, I mean, yeah, as long as you've got the the uh, mounting so spot, right? For a 30, yeah, it is so tiny. It's like a little bigger than a quarter. Right. Yeah, I my I mean, yeah, it's yeah, it's super super small. I mean, it's incredibly tiny. So, um, so yeah, it's it's a cool little drive. I really liked it. Um, you know, I gave it a nine out of ten. The two terabyte is one seventy nine ninety nine, while the one terabyte is eighty four ninety nine. Um, just a nice little upgrade, you know. And it's good to see uh, Patriot come out with something like this because again, I think. One, you buy, maybe you don't buy the most high-end ROG Ally. You buy the one that's 512 gig. You know, you load you load certain games on there. That thing's going to fill up, right? And then yep. you can upgrade to this where you get more than double the space and you get faster performance as well, uh, which is really nice. So, so yeah, cool little drive. So definitely check out the review. And if you do have a mobile gaming console, it's, uh, it's a nice little upgrade that you can kind of, you know, do right there, which is, uh, which is really nice. So. Uh, we'll move on from there to our final review this week. And this is a really interesting keyboard. It has some things. Oh, wait. I think I linked the wrong one. I did link the wrong one in the show notes, but we'll go to it. Um, this is the Epo Maker RT100. And this is a mechanical keyboard. Um, our first keyboard from Epo Maker. And it's, like I said, it's pretty interesting. Um, very retro design keyboard as you can see it's a 97 key keyboard um gasket mount design pbt keycaps it has mechanical key switches um and it has this it came with this like really nice cable too this like thicker rubber thick, cable yeah. um and it's one of the ones where the actual connector has a little led on it that lets you know that it's getting power which is pretty cool too hmm. um so yeah really cool there like i said if you look at the design itself i mean you could call it a Noctua keyboard, almost. Not as dark. I think that's what I said last week. Yeah, it was almost that color scheme. Yeah, so with the 97 key layout, full complement of keys, all your arrow keys, um, your number pad here as well. And we do get a little volume uh, multimedia knob here. Hmm. I do feel that that's incredibly out of place. It just doesn't look right on this style of keyboard. It kind of just looks I agree. Um, You know, it just... I don't know. I think like a roller would have looked cool. Like next yeah. to right? Like a yeah. Yeah, it's something I just I just feel like something it looks different. Yeah, it looks a little out of place. But um the like I said, the PBT keycaps, they feel really good as well. And they have the kind of like the oversized legends. These are not see-through legends, um, which you'll see. Um, and then we have sea salt silent switches from Epo Maker. And you have to listen to the sound test in the actual review. But these are incredibly silent. Probably one of the most silent keyboards that I've used when it comes to like a mechanical keyboard. They feel really good as well. Um, and with this one, they are completely hot swappable. You can go ahead and swap these out, no problem. 
um, if you want to, you know, you know, change them out later. And uh, Epo Maker does offer this keyboard in a bunch of different switch types. This is just the switch type that they sent us. Um, of course, you know, you can you have three different levels of adjustment here when it comes to the angle of the keyboard, as you can see. Very easy to go ahead and do that. Just a simple type C on the top edge of the keyboard right there for connectivity. And then at the top other top corner, they hide the 2.4 gigahertz uh, wireless dongle in there. So this is, again, same thing as the other keyboard. You can do 2.4 gigahertz. You can do Bluetooth as well. Um, and, of course, you can do wired. And then it comes with this little screen, this little removable screen, um, which kind of sits off the you know where that little where the dongle was this goes in it's a little type c connector that goes right in there and that's kind of what it looks like and then we'll show you um you know what it actually comes out to so as you can see with the rgb lighting you're not going to get much shine through because again yep. no shine through legends or anything like that um <clears throat> but the screen is pretty cool so the screen We'll show you your time, your dates, uh, how charged the keyboard is, what type of connectivity, and the temperature uh, where you're located. So you put in like your city and it will show you that. Now, <clears throat> for the CPU usage, I couldn't get it to work. I don't know if it's because I'm on an AMD system or what, but I could not get the CPU temp or the CPU usage to work. But you can also load your own picture here as well. So like there's like oh, I think cool. computer's logo. Um, you can do animated GIFs on there. And then as you can, like, as you're doing your connection, whether it's Bluetooth or the wireless, it will show you on the screen, which is kind of cool too. It's much easier than trying to figure out, okay, uh, this LED is blinking. What does that mean? Like it shows you mm -hmm. on the screen, which is pretty cool there as well. So, um, so yeah, pretty cool little screen. It's a nice little addition. The software is pretty archaic. I'd say, um, <laughs> it gets the job Looks a little done rough. a lot. Yeah. It allows you to remap things and 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 stuff like that. Um, and with the the little screen, you can download animations right from the software uh, and gifs and things like that, which is pretty cool. Um, and again, here's that RGB lighting at nighttime, as you can see. But the best thing about this keyboard is how well it feels. It is so comfortable, um, incredibly silent, very very comfortable. And for a keyboard that's only $115, I mean, pretty that's nice. wild that it's that that price comes with that nice cable, comes yeah. with the little screen add-on. Like that cable alone, like if you were to buy it, it's probably like a $30 cable, I would guess. I mean, so. the, the cables, the cable's really nice. And you, you know, like the actual keyboard itself is mostly plastic, mm -hmm. um, but it does have the gasket mount design, which adds to it feeling a lot more comfortable um and again you the switches are like my again i never used these switches before and they are really really comfortable the keycaps are comfortable i really like this keyboard if it wasn't so big i'd probably keep it i'm probably going to swap back to another keyboard but yeah it's it's a really nice really nicely you would like this keyboard if i brought it to ces so i wouldn't be clacking around oh my gosh so. yeah yes yeah, please so. so yeah so i gave it an eight out of ten um the things that i didn't like about it um, again, I couldn't get the CPU usage section on the mm -hmm. screen to work. Um, that multimedia knob looks a little bit out of place and the software is, like I said, it's kind of archaic, uh, could use a little, you know, but again, when you're not as well-known brands, the, the software takes a little while to get semi-decent. Yep. So, um, but if you're looking just for a solid keyboard, again, you don't even have to use the software if you don't want to, um, if you could, you can just plug this in it's going to work no problem. And again, it's very, very comfortable. So definitely go ahead and check that review out from there we'll move on to case mod friday and we have a build this week that is just it doesn't even look real <laughs> and uh the guy uh the modding cafe who actually uh did this build they were getting comments that it's fake it's like it's ai it's like not really real. wow yeah well, why is this not loading for me let's see all right. Well, for some reason, I wonder if it's doing it to me too. Well, we can. Yeah, it's. Uh... Yeah, that's weird. Well, huh. for some reason, uh, you guys get. Hopefully, you guys can see this. 
Um, but this is from Modding Cafe. Actually, let me just bring up the Facebook post that has the uh, images on here. So have people just never seen custom builds like this before and they just thought it was thought it was fake, huh? Apparently. Let's see if we can find. OK, here we go. So this let's bring this back up. This is the build here, and it's built after the Dire Tormentor uh, from Dota 2. And that's what this is specifically built for, to look like. And they've somehow suspended this cube in the air. It, it's just so crazy. We have the video in the article if you want to check out the video because it shows how they built this. Um, but again, it doesn't – Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of doesn't look real. But it is real, obviously. I mean, you can see there's a system in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this has that block that takes the that doesn't have the tubing yep, in the front. The it's back. all in the back, uh, which is super cool. And you can see they use those fans with the LCD screens as well. Yes, in here, that's very cool. Uh, which is really cool. But just the craftsmanship in this and like, man. yeah, it's a lot of work to. Put yeah, this you can together. see this. Yeah, those this, those fans are awesome. Yeah, the fans with the screens in there. That's the temperature. Yeah, I mean, this thing is just one crazy build. But yeah, really cool. Like I said, we have the video in the, and you can see how the, the water cooling comes down and goes into okay, this. Okay, so I, was, I could tell there's more like onto the back. They must have, yeah, they've got to like, uh, like welded the chain links or something, right? Like pulled the chain tight and then welded it somehow so that that's how it's holding it up. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty interesting. Like I said, check really out the neat. video in the article if you want to see how they built it. But you can see how that's how the back goes, and all the cabling goes around. But it's that's neat. It's a really really crazy build. So definitely check that out in our case mod Friday section. Um, just a reminder here that we are still running our Corsair M seventy five wireless gaming mouse giveaway. Um, it's just it's super easy to, easy to enter. We do all of our contests via Gleam, so you can easily go ahead and enter this. There's seven days left. Um, it's a great gaming mouse, too. It's it's a nice, it's a little bit heavier, uh, which some people might prefer, you know. Um, but, yeah, really cool to, you know, just go ahead and uh, check that out. So, um, yeah, and we'll do another giveaway after this one as well. So we got more, more giveaways coming, Sweet. so definitely uh, stay tuned for all of that. <clears throat> And we'll move on to news. And, you know, when we started hearing about the RTX 50 series, the 5090, people were saying, and even NVIDIA's roadmap said 2025, mm -hmm. right? Um, we've been hearing rumblings that it could it could be fourth quarter of this year, which if okay, you think cool. about it, it would make sense just for the fact that, I mean, that's when the, you know, the 40 series launched. Yeah, no, End this is exciting. Um, that's when everybody's buying because it's holiday season. Yep, get that Christmas um, money or yeah, gifts for people. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you do you have any thoughts on the fifty ninety or the fifty series? Do you do you think we will see it before the end of the year? I don't know. I I could just, I could see a you know we're getting news now, so it almost makes me feel like we could see these at CES instead but okay. uh, especially since we just saw in january you know like the article mentions the 40 series supers um launch that's not a very long time frame for them to be out but then again like i why not? I, could, I could say if we if we see anything teased at computex then you think for sure they'll be they'll yeah be i mean it just makes like for sales it makes sense. That's when people are buying. Yeah. You know, it also comes down to like, you know, availability. Like, do they have enough ready? Will they have enough ready in time too? You don't want to launch and have enough, have no product available. Either. I mean, if you're ready to start making stuff at pretty close to Computex or afterwards, you, you'd be able to ramp up quite a bit of um, inventory, I would think. And then like, you could take advantage of, um, Black Friday, like offloading some of your 40 series cards, right? Like 
drop the price a little on those, get rid of that inventory in preparation of having a fresh batch of 50 series, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. I I think it, there's a good possibility um, that it will happen. Um, old man in the chat says, do you anticipate scalpers buying up all i mean you'll you'll see some scalpers um you know there's no evga so you're not going to get that you know the the They're protection really nice of, yeah yeah so yeah you could see it especially with like you know there's companies that just don't care they'll just be like oh you want 100 sure um but it was i we didn't have the the same things we had going on with the 30 series in a yeah. pandemic and supply chain, right? With yeah, the there's not. We didn't I see mean, it as badly with the 40s, so hopefully that uh, stays the same. Yeah. So if if there's not as much supply chain issues, you're always going to have scalpers for new products, right? But on the scale that it happened with the 40 series, unless something crazy happens, which obviously we don't want to happen, I don't see that happening. Um, but I, like I said, I could easily see. These come out November 28th. Write that down. I said it. November 28th. Oh, you think so, huh? Good. That's just my, like, if I was if I was to guess of when these would come out, I would say November 28th. But Okay. <laughs> you want to put some money on this, or? <laughs> not yet. Uh, we have, there's, not a, there's not enough leaks yet. Okay. But, but I'm just saying, if, if, I, if they were launching in Q4, that's when they would launch. I yeah. would assume. Um, but let's see how let's see how this year goes, the rest of the year in Computex. And if we get more leaks talking about this, then I could see it becoming more of a reality, I would say. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Rob in the chat says, I always anticipate people selling box only GPUs on eBay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you gotta gotta read those full descriptions. I remember like people were selling like we people were selling a piece of paper that said like RTX 4090 on it, you know, it was, <laughs> that's so it terrible. Was, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was crazy. I had time. some iPad boxes that I was going to sell on eBay and then I was like, nah, I don't want to deal with the hassle. Like I was obviously going to be li very forward that, hey, these are only boxes because yeah. boxes do sell like for other products and for iPads as well. But I was like, yeah, I don't want to deal with the hassle of it. Yeah, well, also on the GPU side, uh, yeah. it looks like we will get, hopefully, uh, new Intel Battle Mage. Uh, this is like their second gen of their graphics cards before Black Friday. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see what Intel does on this next gen. They've had an entire generation of products out in the wild with a lot, you know, people got their hands on these. So there's a lot of, a lot of testing going around. Um, no, do you think cool. I, I'm excited for them? I think that like the first card they came out with was like, I think you have to give them the chance to, to see where the first one lands and see how they react to that card and where they end up with their second card. Like this one, I feel like is the true card to show like, all right, they're really in this yeah. or no, they're just going to, you know, back out after this type of thing. Yeah. I'll be interested to see how high end they go to. They were pretty mid range. Yeah, they yep. Like their highest end product was a very much a mid range to lower end product. So we'll see if we get a, something that's going to be competitive against a higher end AMD or NVIDIA product. Um, but that's, I mean, that, that like just like this, this is the good time to release because you want it for the holiday season, right? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> especially if, if we don't get an NVIDIA uh, launch during that time, you announce these new products that could be competitive um, at that time, affordable, people might, you know, and you'd probably see a lot of them in pre-builds as well. So, yep. so yeah, that'll be interesting to see as, uh, ah, man, Years years gone by quick already, um, <laughs> you know. So we'll see we'll see how all of that goes. Um, Acer released a new gaming ultra wide, which I I want. Um, this has all the specs that I want. So this is their Predator X forty nine X ultra wide. It is a forty nine inch ultra wide OLED, mm. two hundred and forty hertz. 
I wish we would see these at CES. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think Acer ever has a presence there. Or if they do, if we, we do, don't, we don't, we don't, them. Yeah, yeah, we, we don't, don't, we don't see it. Um, but this looks like a nice display. Um, their, their, their predator monitors always are. Always yeah. 1800 R curve. Yeah. Like yeah. I said, I always talk about nice. upgrading this 49 that I have. And I think that a 240. Yeah. We'll check be, all the boxes. Pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this is, I, I don't know if they listed the price. Mm, no price yeah the predator and the the acer monitor or asus monitors were always like the yeah top end when we really started getting high-end monitors and this uh it has a built-in kvm and supports dual 2k displays at the same time also has a type c port that has 90 watts of output yeah that's, uh, power that's... which is really awesome there as well so uh hdmi 2.1 display port 1.4 uh amd FreeSync premium i mean yeah this is a really good looking um display so yeah i can only hope i can only you know maybe i'll drop drop the money for a new monitor at some point this year we'll see um we talked last week about that graphics card that a lot of people thought were was a april fools from gigabyte mm -hmm. that uh oris extreme x ice motherboard and now apparently that was real okay and apparently they're coming out with an extreme x ice motherboard a z790 motherboard that i guess has a gold that's CPU awesome. socket i think it um, looks sweet and it has this like weird design here obviously the all white design um you know, this technique. is limited edition. It's it's gold, little gold plaque here. It says crystallized titanium texture down here. I mean, now was this a water block, like a mono block build? I have no clue. Because that that cover goes over your CPU. Where's your cooler going? I think that's just. I don't know. Maybe that just comes off. And yeah, like that, your memory has to sit under there as well. Other yeah, it probably yeah, it probably comes just off, comes right? off. It probably just comes off. Yeah. It's just for looks. But I do like the this all white design. And I like I said, we've seen this Aorus board, the the normal one that has the display here looks awesome. But having it all in white uh, would look great. No white PCB though. It's a little bit disappointing. Um, but pretty cool look. I like I said, it's it's always good to see new kind of lines come out from mm -hmm. from different brands, especially when it comes to motherboards. Um, but this seems to be limited edition, obviously, uh, with a little placard here. I don't know how many they're going to make. This reminds um, me of the when we first saw the NZXT motherboards, right? And it was like almost all covered except for the ports. Like we've we've yeah. moved to a, so many companies making boards like that where they're just covering everything up. And yeah, um, I wonder how much of that goes back to that first NZXT design. I mean, probably. And the, and again, we're going to all the connections on the right. back. Too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. even if you look at this, like there's no connections on the bottom. Like, yeah, you, I mean, you have connections the edge, here. But... Yeah. So pretty, pretty interesting design. Um, we'll see. Uh, well, like I said, when we actually, when this is actually becomes official, if it does, uh, we'll, we'll give you guys more information on that. But pretty, uh, pretty interesting motherboard there. Um, Razor, we saw this at CES. It was kind of under the radar. I feel because a lot of people weren't talking about it. Um, oh, this thing was awesome. Razer Blade 18. So 18 inch full desktop replacement uh, motherboard or not motherboard. Uh, I'm top. <laughs> and um, the interesting thing about this uh, when we saw it is that all the way back in January at CES, it had Thunderbolt 5. Yeah. And Thunderbolt. he was running three. 4K like 120 Just screens, if I remember. Off of correctly. one cable. Off of out. one cable coming out. Yeah, it was wild. Yeah. Full desktop replacement. This is a really big like I said, this is if you just don't want the desktop. I mean, this is this is a really, really big laptop. Um but yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, um, it was a, it was awesome seeing that thing. I was surprised it didn't get more more news. We I know we wrote about it. Um but it's got a yeah, ton of awesome yeah, I mean, features. The display on it's, it's a 4K display on the actual laptop. Uh, 200 hertz as well. Um, Thunderbolt 5, like we said. 
Um, Intel Core i9 HX processors. Yeah, and it's really thin too. I mean, it, it's decently thin for a big 18 inch laptop as well. Uh, RT, up to RTX 4090 inside. Man. It's going to be expensive. Uh, starts at $3,100. So, yeah. Very I'm expensive. not surprised. I mean, for what it can do, right? Yeah, and I they must have finalized some of that um, Thunderbolt five connectivity and um, feature set because I remember he was saying like if people unplugged it or moved it too much, he had to like restart the whole like yeah. setup in order to get it back up and going again. So um, hopefully they've made it through some of those challenges. I'm sure they have and uh, finalized some specs and everything. Like it that. always is so interesting when we go to CES or other events where like you just see stuff that's just kind of just sitting there like completely under the radar. There was no big sign that said Thunderbolt five. Yeah. There was not like the laptop was just there. And yeah, but it was front and center too, but it was front and center. People weren't like, yeah, it, yeah. it wasn't a big advertised really. Yeah. So pretty cool to see that from Razer. Um, if you are looking for a desktop replacement, that's, that's one you should definitely look at if you have the funds. Um, Lenovo has confirmed that they're already in development of their next generation uh, Legion Go. So Legion Go 2. Um, and the Legion had like just came out, but they're already working on the next one. These are, like I said, these are so popular. And Ryan and I always talk about how we would love to have one, but we probably never use it all that much. Um, but. Like this I is said, perfect these... for that two terabyte drive you reviewed, right? Yeah. yeah. Who knows? Maybe this will come with a larger drive, but uh, yeah, yeah. These are, they're cool. That's just going to be a, a continuing growing segment, I think. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing is once the companies kind of finalize their actual exterior and internal designs, you can pump these out, right? Like you know, you can upgrade them and and all that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, yeah pretty. Uh, well, I think do being able to dock them too will be nice, right? Like throwing this, uh, again, like a PC version of the Switch. Take it with yeah. you, play your games, and then when you get home, throw this onto either your gaming monitor or your larger screen in the living room. And, and I, we have, I have seen some setups where people do that. Yeah. You know, they have their whole gaming setup at home, do. and this is what they, you know, they, this is their whole PC, which is pretty cool that you could, you know, take your whole PC with you for the most mm -hmm. part. That's pretty awesome, so. So yeah, pretty cool to see that there as well. Um, and then finally, we talked about this last week. Um, this brand, this TRYX, Trix brand, uh, we talked about their AIO last week. Uh, they made it official this week. Um, and they also introduced uh, fans in a case as well. Um, so this is the AIO. This is this, the curved screen on the AIO. It's an AMOLED screen. Pretty cool, and this this one's pretty cool too. So you could actually have like two different things being displayed here, um, on this, which is pretty cool. And then we can get kind of a look at the case, uh, big aquarium style case. Looks pretty cool though. And these are the fans that okay. they have. I see some resemblance to some other case design and fan design, but yeah, yeah. But this is pretty interesting from a brand who you know this is out of I think China, China. Uh, the AIO is, is very, very cool. Yeah. So we'll see the thing that I, I get excited about these brands, but then you're like, okay, will we see this stuff in the U S right? Right. right. If does even make it over here. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's the biggest thing, but this does seem like a pretty cool brand. That's, that's doing some cool stuff. Um, especially with the AIO that has that screen on, it looks awesome. Um, but yeah, we'll see if this stuff eventually gets sold in the US. If it does, uh, we'll try to get... Well, and I wonder how pronounced that curve is. You know what I mean? Like, oh. it just... Or is it just a wrap around? You know, I think it's it's not quite a, like a... It's not a hard 90 degree... No, end, no. But it's... I'm just thinking of like the things you could do with it, right? Animation wise. Um, yeah. We'll yeah. Have to see and I'm sure there's software. I, I would assume they have software that allows you to kind of design how everything looks on the AIO. Right. But overall, like I said, I think it looks it looks great. So like I said, hopefully uh, we see this stuff in the U.S. So maybe we can get our hands on it and uh, do a review. That'd be pretty cool. So, yeah. So, yeah. So talking about uh, what we have coming up next week, I have a very fast Gen 5 NVMe SSD. 
Um, this is the Crucial T705, and they did send us a limited edition version that has the white uh, heat spreader on it. Uh, super fast, like I said, Gen 5 drive. Um, really excited to go ahead and take a look at that as well. And I'll also be taking a look at a motherboard. So the Asus ROG Strix Z790E Gaming Wi-Fi 2. Uh, I'll be taking a look at this motherboard as well. So excited to do a, another motherboard review and especially one from Asus. So uh, yeah, so definitely stay tuned next week for all of that stuff. Um, and then that brings us to our question of the week. And it is... Who is your internet provider and what type of speeds are you getting? I'll let you go, Ryan. Uh, all right. So I use Cox and I have 300 down and 30 up. Mm. So I'm, I'm in a shush. I'm in a grandfathered plan. That, that plan isn't offered any longer. Um, I'm holding out. I haven't gone to like, I could get gig. Um, but it's still like gig down and like slow up. So I didn't want that. There's another um, fiber company um, that's kind of regional that is supposedly expanding into my neighborhood and area pretty soon here. It's probably going to be multiple months away and they offer up to 2.5 up and down. Oh, um, nice. Symmetrical. So, which is really nice. AT&T fiber is not available in my neighborhood either. So I can't like just switch to that. So, um, for the price point that I'm at, it's just made sense to stick with this 330. Um, I was on one of those before I moved to um, to California. I was on uh, Comcast and I was on like a, a 3015 plan. That's what and you it, were on, really? Yeah. 30 down? Yeah, something like that. It was, wasn't was great. It was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was slow. Wow. Um, obviously, now that I've moved, I'm on AT and T fiber, so I have gig up, gig down. Right. Um, but you have to realize people don't realize that you need the hardware too. Oh yeah, yeah. You gotta have a router that that. Uh, yeah, because like my friends, like it. a lot of my friends would be like, "Oh yeah, like I got fiber, but I'm getting like 200 up and down." I'm like, "Do you have the right hardware?" And you, like, you know, yeah, you need to have a router uh, that will support that uh, Wi-Fi six E uh, router as well, so you can get those speeds. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's, I've I've been really happy with AT and T. Not a whole lot of issues. Um, yeah, it was one of the most exciting things when I moved here was to get to get faster internet. So, so yeah. Um, also, as we come to the end here, I'll be talking about anything tech related. Have you done anything tech related? I don't think so. I was looking around the room. No. Again, I'm just excited to get some of these other reviews done. Yeah. Because um, I got like uh, this height cooler um, to take a look at. Um, and then another AIO is uh, on its way, although it looked like it got delayed. Unfortunately, I had a shipping notification that it, it was delayed. So, uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm excited for that um, that height AIO. We saw it at CES. Mm -hmm. and. Yeah, it's it's definitely thick, so we'll see. And that's some really cool <laughs> has some really cool functionality that a not a lot of other AIOs have as well. So yeah. um yeah, excited to uh see that review whenever you get that done. So so yeah, so that is it for the podcast. Sorry, I'm under the weather, guys. I, I feel like I barely made it through here, but um hopefully by next week I'm better. If I'm not better, that's that's definitely a problem. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm sure. Um but yeah, Ryan will be gaming. I'll be gaming maybe for a little bit uh, with him as well. We do that over on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv forward slash the computers. Ryan runs that stream, so you don't have to hear my sick, raspy voice. Uh, but he will have that stream up momentarily. So if you want to keep on hanging out with us, you can do that over there. And we will see everybody next week.